Welcome back everybody to another video on the Volvo sleeper build proudly brought to you by eBay Today I've got a lot, I've got I've got I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got Today I'm going to fuel your excitement for this build by installing a full Dishworks fuel system. We've got injectors, we've got a fuel pump, a fuel filter, fuel pressure regulator, beautiful AN lines, the most beautiful billet fuel rails I've ever laid eyes on, and a bunch of fittings to make it all work. Dishworks, of course, makes the best fuel system parts. I run their parts on all of my builds, and you can purchase all of Dishworks stuff from eBay. We're also gonna get a few other things on this engine finished up because we're starting the final assembly. We gotta get these heater core lines on, we gotta get the power steering system set up. But ladies and gents, without any further ado, let's go ahead and start on the fuel system. <laughs> The factory fuel system on the Volvo is a little unique because there is not a fuel pump in the fuel tank. It is a inline fuel pump. Ah. So we have this big fuel line coming out of the fuel tank, which was going up here. There was a big tray that housed the stock fuel pump and fuel filter, and then it went up to the engine with one line. We're gonna recreate that setup just using aftermarket upgraded parts. Dishworks does make inline fuel pumps. This is their biggest inline fuel pump that they offer. So we'll make a tray that houses this, along with a filter, and we'll be all good. So I took apart the factory fuel pump and fuel filter housing, cleaned it up. Now we're gonna make a new plate that mounts to this with bushings, and then we'll put the fuel pump, fuel filter, entire welding career I was using just a cheap $60 welding helmet that I bought from a from a local store for Christmas I got this this awesome new mask and my goodness this thing it feels like I uh, I don't know it feels like I just put my contacts in with the old mask I was blind and now I thought something was wrong at first because I was like I can see everything so clearly but it's just awesome so now we got this metal plate which is mounted through rubber bushings onto the factory Volvo fuel pump bracket. We wanted to mount it on rubber so it's quieter. If it's solid mounted, it's gonna be much louder so this will make it quieter. We want it to be as nice and quiet as possible. Unfortunately, the curse of the AN fittings has struck again. I double checked, I triple checked, I got all the right fittings when I ordered, and yet I still forgot to get a few fittings. With that being said, I can't finish the fuel pump and fuel filter setup, but that is okay because we have fuel rails, fuel injectors, and the regulator to mount up in the engine bay. So let's drop the car down and start working on that. 
before we even put the intake manifold on and start doing the fueling stuff, we gotta get these heater core lines sorted. The LS is a little funky because its heater core lines are at the front and most other cars are at the bottom, the back. So we got the intake manifold on, the new fuel rails, fuel injectors, pressure regulator, and some of the fuel lines. I just received the rest of the fittings I need to finish up the rest of the fuel system. I got all that mounted, then I went ahead and laid some paint on that top plate. While we wait for the paint to dry, I'm gonna start working on the feed and return line. The feed line on the system is gonna be a dash eight, the return line is gonna be a dash six. So the fuel pump has these two prongs for the power and ground. Since this is going inside the little cage, it's gonna be hard to get my fingers in there with a wrench to tighten those two prongs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make like a little adapter harness so the prongs will always be attached and then there will be a plug to plug it into the, the factory wiring. So that's what that turned into. Looks nice. So now I need to make the other side of that plug that goes onto the stock fuel pump wiring. In order to do that, I have to figure out which wire is positive, which wire is negative. There's a yellow wire, there's a black wire. 
I'm assuming the black wire is the ground, but I want to make sure so I don't ruin one of the nice weatherproof connectors. Anyway, in order to check the wires, I put the battery on. We're about to turn the key on and see if the fuel pump, like, see if it gets power. There's no ECU in it, and I feel like sometimes fuel pumps are powered by the ECU. I don't know though. Let's figure it out. Key in and on. Car go up. All right, so it's these two wires here. Well, the fuel pump isn't getting power, which is a little annoying, but for now, it doesn't matter. I did determine that the black wire is indeed the ground, so we'll go ahead and wire it up and then give it some switch power, laid it on the line. Probably a good idea to put it on its own relay instead of wires anyway, so. Well, here it is. I mean, I'm pretty freaking happy with this. It looks real clean. Even in this thing, the fuel pump is surrounded by, by rubber on the hose clamp areas. This attaches to the stock line, and now we gotta make a feed line going up to the rail. Let's go ahead and put this on the cage and put that into the car, though. Fuel pump hot wiring attempt two. <laughs> that was it. Just uh, watch the fuel pressure gauge here. Things loud. Ah, oh, shit. A little bit of a fuel leak up there. This hose bar fitting right here started to leak fuel all over this, which is painted with normal stuff. And now that fuel has dissolved a lot of the paint on the cage and the bracket that we made. I think it's just leaking because this fuel line right here is so old that the rubber is so hard that it just doesn't it doesn't create a soft enough seal. Like that, uh, that hose clamp is as tight as it can possibly get, and yet still leaks. And in order to repaint everything down here, which I have to because I want to drive this in rain and snow, got to take it all apart, sand it all down, paint it again. Shh. You freaking kidding? All right, I believe I have fixed all of the leaks. So we're gonna go ahead and test it again. So we power up our fuel pump. No leaks, holding at 50 PSI. All good. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have a leak-free fuel system capable of, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> but we'll find out how much horsepower it can make. Fuel system is more capable than the engine, let's just put it that way. Now, I don't wanna spoil the next video too much, but I'm excited to show you guys these things, so. I got the turbo kit ceramic coated, and my God, does it look good. It makes my welds look worse, but the entire product looks really good. The ceramic coat will help with corrosion and mostly it will help with heat management. We are also going to be heat wrapping the Y pipe. So we should be fine with burning off belts, getting the intake too hot. We, we shouldn't have any of those issues with a ceramic coat 
and some heat wrap. But guys, that's all I got for you today. Huge thank you again to Dishworks and to eBay for making this possible. If you guys need fuel system parts, please check out Dishworks. And if you want, you can purchase them off of eBay. In the next video, we are going to get the power steering system sorted. We're gonna go ahead and put that turbo kit back together, get the, just get that all actually dialed in, and we might start wiring it up because I have all the stuff I need to wire it up and make this engine run. So we'll get as close to making this engine run as possible. If you do wanna support the channel other than just watching these videos, you can buy some awesome Gingy merch up there. If you wanna watch the next video, you can also click up there, join Patreon, get access to all the videos early, and get access to some exclusive content. But guys, see you in the next one. Peace out, goodbye.